Hi everyone, it's David here, Art of Shop. Uh, over the last number of uh, months, really, we, we learned certainly that 4G is becoming more and more of interest to people and we um, just want to see specifically what the um, current modems is that is available and, and use those and explain how you can get those modems ready for external antennas. Um, so today I'm just looking at the um, Huawei B818, currently available from Optus and Vodafone. Just have a, a, a few minutes just to explain how it works and how you set it up so that it can support the external antennas. So there you go, that's, um, that's, a, that's my unit. So to be honest, I bought it on Gumtree. So you don't necessarily have to get a new contract to get one of these beauties. You can um, look elsewhere for them um, by itself. It's just a box, so there's antennas in there. That's probably what takes up mo most of the volume. But what to me is most important is what's here at the back. So if you look at the back, there's a, a section there that says, says main and diversity. That's the main antenna and it's diversity antenna. So under that is really where things happen for me, for us as an antenna company. There you go, two little connectors to two TS9 connectors. And that's basically it as far as hardware is concerned. You need to get access to those two antenna ports and then we can connect an external antenna to it. But there's of course some software configuration to be done. So let's quickly log into it and I'll show you how that works. So what's most important is actually the bottom of the, um, the unit. As with many of these modern electronic devices, you'll get all the uh, login information and initial password set up stuff that you need to know. Um, I've already pre-set it up so that the password and the um, SSID is um, specific to what, um, what I want it to be and also to be more secure. So you have to remember to change the password as soon as you can because this number, a lot of these numbers would be really available and easily hackable. So the first thing you do, power it up. Second thing you do is change your passwords. It's just really important to do. I've already done that, but as you can see, what, what still remains is the IP address, 192.168.8.1. That's, that's visible on there. That's what I am. Um, I'll just keep this upside down so that you can see it. Um, I type that in here and I get to the landing page for the um, actual device itself. So the password is the one that I um, already set up. And I'm in. So you can see, I um, currently have a full signal on Vodafone. <laughs> Just to show that I'm agnostic towards um, network carriers, this is an Optus device, I'm using a Vodafone SIM. So I don't have a specific preference, I just use what I get. Um, the big thing here is, um, of course I have a strong signal, so I can't show you the effect of a 4G antenna, excellent antenna, not in my office, but um, when we go outside later in, um, Later in the year, we'll um, have some fun in the um, camping site. You go to advanced. Under advanced, you go to system. And under system, initially where you want to look is just basically just scroll down. And when you scroll down, you come to this point where you'll see cell ID, RSRQ, minus 6, RSRP, minus 95. So the signal strength is minus 95. Okay, so maybe we can get something with the actual antenna because we want to be better than minus 90. Better means the negative number goes to a, a lower number. So minus 95 is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite doable, but you want to get to minus 85 and even better. So maybe we'll try that. Um, and that's really the most important thing for me to do here today is the RSRQ and RSRP. That's what we can use. SINR signal to noise ratio is 13 dB as this is pretty clean here. So um, that's all good. Um, now showing you system settings. That's the next button there. If you scroll down a little bit, you see antenna settings there. You have to expand and then you see that picture there. It says status settings auto. You say antenna one and you see antenna two. Now that is equivalent that picture there. You should see that picture as the two pictures here. So you have main and diversity as the top and the bottom on your actual device itself. So ah, go there. That's main and diversity. On the screen it shows antenna 1 and antenna 2. Currently it's set to auto and it's set to internal. That's all perfectly fine because that's exactly what we have. Just to explain, same as with my previous device that I had at home, you have three settings, other settings other than auto, so internal, which is obviously you force it to be internal, so as is, this is how it works. You have external, so you can force this thing to go for only external antennas or you can go for mix. I just want to mention again, mix means that you have antenna 1 and antenna 2 on different ports. So antenna 1 in this port, what you look here, would be main, would be your external antenna. 
diversity would remain as is. So diversity would be using the internal antenna and the um, main would be external. Do not use a splitter. Do not use a single antenna coming down split into two. That's basically what I want to say here. Now, um, that's all I can say at this point without doing anything specific. So let me quickly run you through the kit and then we'll just connect it. And if we get the results, great. If we don't, at least you understand how it works. And then we will look for good results again in a weak spot. At the moment, this is not too bad. So, and I'm in, indoors, so using an antenna indoors may have um, a bit of a surprise. So let's see, but anyway, that's it. Thank you. Now on our website, we are working on presenting a few basic kits. The idea with the kit is to make it very useful and just user friendly so you can look at a kit and say, well, that's going to work or not going to work. The essence of the kit is really an antenna, which is like the one behind me, the pointing x 2, uh, very successful, very um, useful antenna in a lot of cases. You have to be um, fixed because it has a direction, um, it's a directional antenna, so you, you set it up and it goes in the direction that you get the best signal. You need some cables, so in the kit we come with a default of 10 meter cables, but there is of course the option to go shorter or longer because that might be better for you. And the most important bit at the end is to, <laughs> to get the connection into your modem itself. Um, now, sometimes it would be adequate to have an SMA connector on the cable, um, but more often than not, specifically in the consumer range where you look, think about Netgear devices like the um, Telstra Nighthawk, we look at the um, Huawei B818, they always use these little connectors, that's TS9s. So TS9 is a plug-in connector. So in our kit, this will be included regardless. So what you will get is an antenna, this one or other models, 10 meter cables by default, unless you tell us to change it, and a pigtail. You can use the pigtail to connect, or without the pigtail, you use the cable itself. Okay, so what I have done is, I'll just uncoil my cable, so these are the cables that I plan to use. As you can see here, um, I just put a, we put a right angle end top on so that the cable comes out and comes straight down. We do test the right angle cable connector because it's it's not the best connector to use but if you properly connect it and you use good reasonable and good quality connectors not just um, the cheapest one you could find um, it's quite manageable um, we have the coil of cable as you can see here. yes you can see it um, and this is then SMA connector connected to this DS9 cable now on the actual software itself that I'm running I just want to check that I can see yes um, actual software itself currently, I set it to auto just so you can see what's going to happen. Um, and as you can see, antenna status for one and two is internal. So this thing is just running on its own. Um, I have to warn you that because I'm indoors, the antenna itself doesn't make a big difference. Specifically now, it's, it's right adding into the concrete wall. So it's all about the setup. And this machine, at least the setup can tell you, you're connected correctly and all working well. Then if you are in a place where it actually makes sense, which we would want to do later as well, it would work. But this is just much better to demonstrate here. So what you do, first of all, you expose those connectors. Um, as I say, these are quite delicate little connectors. So you have to be careful. Don't break the, the connector, it's quite easy to break. We've had uh, quite a few calls um, after a few weeks, some of the uh, connector is broken because children um, you know, yanked the cable or something. So be, be mindful of that, but have a look at what's going to happen here. If I plug it in, I wish you could feel this because you have to feel it and you have to feel it very carefully. It just slides in and then it's there. There's, there's no, that's it, it's in. Now, obviously, if you can see there, the actual connector itself is there, it's going, um, switching over now it says antenna 2 status is external so it it acknowledges the connection that's what you need and that's really all there is to it then the second one i connected in well the first one basically i just i went bottom first so ironic i guess but there you go that's the connection is in see it's on the camera yes you can see it on the camera it's in and there you go it sees itself as being connected to an external antenna automatically so now this antenna is doing the work that it's supposed to do. This is not functioning the way it should when you're outside in the field, but what you would do if you were in a place where it is absolutely necessary, you would go to device information and you would have a look at what the RSRQ is and the RSRP is, and you start to tune your antenna, you start to rotate it to see where can you find the best signal. But this connection is first, you first need to confirm this modem is seeing the excellent antenna using a kit such as this one we have here. 
Um, I'll rotate it now just so you could see the difference here, but this is basically the end of what I wanted to show. So I'll just turn this around. Um, so if you turn this around, you do a refresh. You can see different values, minus 93. You turn it around. As I said, I'm just pointing it indoors and still indoors. It goes to minus 92. Minus 93 again. And that's what you would do if you're outside on the roof. You would just really find the speed spot. And if you can see, there's a 91. So there we go. You can remember we were on minus 95 when I started with the original test. Now we're at minus 91. So if I really want to imagine it, I could see there's at least a little bit of difference. But um, that's not the point. The point is, as I say, this connection, it can be done. It is done. gets done. Everything is automatic. And this thing would work like a dream. Um, I am, like a typical customer, actually just keen to see what speed test the net does. So, <laughs> while we're online, might as well just have a quick look. Okay, I am... Um, <laughs> why would you want to do anything else? If this is what you're external, then I get you. Download minus... Oh, sorry, minus. 131 megabits per second. Upload is 35... Yeah. Man. That is cool. I think that's it. I am happy. Thanks for watching. Now, if you like what we're doing, this is going to be one. We're going to look at the um, Telson Night Talk as well. We're just waiting for new stock. We're going to do the same test with the Teltonica little modem. And then as we go along and as, as more modems get released, we will continue just having a quick setup video to show you what's going on there. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. Please follow us on, well, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. Um, if you want to be on our email list, we'll, um, we'll release these videos and um, we'll just make some noise on, on our website as well. So please feel free to let us know if you have any questions or comments. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.